All right, check this out. You guys are back on the Hater World and on Blue Devil. What we have going on today is a clip from the Bootleg Kev podcast interviewing ESTG. Uh, you know, rapper ESTG walked out mid-interview, felt uncomfortable, and said, I'm out, right? But you already know, before we get into this video, if you guys are new to the Hater World, make sure you go over, hit the subscribe button, Hit the bell, like the video, and most importantly, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys like what I'm doing or whether you don't. Salute to all the day ones. Salute to all the new subscribers. Listen, over on Blue Devil Reactions, we just dropped the Opina J Cats music video reaction. So go over there, support, show some love, uh, comment on the video, share the video. You already know. But back to uh, ESTG. Now look. I have heard the name before, but I never listened to the music. But after yesterday and his little shenanigans, I went to go look for his music and not going to lie, pretty hard, you know, pretty hard. Uh, but he walked out made an interview because they asked him a question about football. Dude got in his feelings and walked out. So check this out. I don't want to hold you guys too long. Let's go ahead and watch this video and get you guys a Southsiders reaction. Let's go. Now, the video, bro, is like 25 minutes long. We're going to start it at the 20-minute mark because that's roughly around when, you know, the drama happened. But I will tell you this. I watched the whole thing, and not once did Bullet Kev say anything out of pocket. Not once. I'm like the guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't got no gimmicks or no funny shit with me. I just drop the music. Yeah. Feel me live my life, and I got stats to prove it. And I know niggas arguing in the barbershop about who's better. I got gold plaques, platinum plaques. As a lead artist, you know what I'm saying? It's a big deal. Got a gold album, the entire album. It's a big deal, man. You know so I ain't, I don't know, I don't feel like it's, it, they shouldn't jumble it up and say this type of music, this type of like, artist. I feel like I'm the... Leading the forefront of, you know what I'm saying, rap in general, not just Louisville. Yeah. I was going to say, what market for you started to pick up on ESTG first outside of Louisville? Like, what was like that city you were like, oh, this is spreading, this is moving somewhere, I, I could actually go get a bag in this place. Like, was there a city that you remember that like really kind of like... It was just all at the same time, kind of like... It just kind of all kind of happened like wildfire quick. I just was... Moving around anyway, so people knew me, like the streets knew me anyway. Then yeah. they come with the music, and we pop up. 80 niggas, 80. Listen, I don't know none of this guy's background. I don't know if he's a street dude. I don't know if he's a college graduate, graduate, or however you say it. I don't know. I really don't know nothing about him. I don't follow him. You know, a lot of people could be saying, like, well, why are you reacting to him? We sort of just reacted to the clip, not to his background. But he did say right now that the streets know him. So obviously, if the streets know you, it's either they know you for music or gangbanging. One or the other, right? The streets only know you for those two reasons. Either you pop in with music or your, your craft, or you pop in in the streets and your voice is, uh, your name is uh, bubbling and making noise, right? And that could be for drug dealing, gangbanging, uh, you know, whatever illegal activity you got, but your name ain't going to be buzzing if, you, if you're if going to college, right? Let's go. Thing is, 80 watches, it don't matter what, if you're getting up and humming, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They gonna, they want to see what you're talking about. Yo, um, I've seen this picture of you at the... Hold on. This is where he asked him that question. Listen. I watched this whole interview, bro, and that motherfucker was boring like that the whole through the whole way through. Like simple ass five second answers. I don't understand how a motherfucker go to a, a interview, right, or a podcast and expect not to talk. Sometimes you gotta coach them though. I had a couple artists up here and I had to tell them like, look, just talk. Whatever happens, bro, if I stay quiet, you can pick up the convo. Right? When I ask you a question, don't make it a 10 second answer. Be be specific and detailed. Make that a few minutes, you know. And then if I jump in, let me 
couple of minutes and then you go back. You know, don't let the room get quiet. That's when it gets awkward. You know, but this guy, the whole interview, bro, he was just like boring as hell. Fell combine? Yeah. Which what well, yeah, ain't seen no picture no NFL Well, combine. I saw you in like the NFL combine looking like workout. Yeah, like a, a workout. Was that just a workout you were doing for a team? I don't know how you see the picture. You ain't read the article that came with it. I just saw a YouTube video where they were talking about uh, you and like I was just watching some of your uh, high school highlights and your college shit. Like I saw like what the, YouTube video you seen? Dude, I don't know, man. It was like a it was like a YouTube video. It showed like you announcing that you're going to Indiana State and what's a YouTube video called? I don't know. I just literally typed in ESTG football highlights, and I was like, damn, this dude was a Beast. You played linebacker, right? Hey, up to this point, Bullet Kev is giving them props, right? Telling them that he was a bad motherfucker when they came to football. Just conversation about his past. You know, listen, your past will come back to haunt you. I remember as a kid, bro, they used to tell me, bro, like I used to hear adults tell me, whatever you do right now, in the future, it will come back to haunt you. And I thought it was a joke, bro. I yeah, shut the fuck up. Bro, I swear to God, it's not a joke. It is not. When you least expect it, when you least expect it, if it ain't karma, it's somebody else, bro. But somebody going to be knocking on that door like, remember me? You know? And listen, it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing because we all got a past, Right? We all got to, I used to do something before I turned into a, well, I, uh, you know, I've had different ways of making money, but, you know, right before I got into this little podcast right now, my second run before this, I, I ran a couple of businesses, you know, and people can say that, oh, well, I'm going to expose you. you. Well, you can't, but, you know, it's those things that, that you were doing before what you're doing right now, you know, and so I, this guy right here, this guy right here was a football player. You know, and I, from the outside looking in, I see nothing wrong with that at all. I think that's a dope-ass accomplishment. Uh, but, you know, a lot of gangsters don't want to be reminded of their past. Me, I don't give a shit, right? But there's a lot of gangsters that, that want this squeaky clean record, but it's like, my boy, you ain't got it. You ain't got it. Let's not forget. Let's not forget the great Master P. No Limit Records, the great Master P, the number one hustler in the rap game, has played basketball, NBA basketball, even if it was for half a season or uh, off season or preseason. He played NBA basketball, was one of the highest paid entertainers in rap, was an actor, created movies, got his whole family rich, all from $10,000. So this guy getting angry over somebody bringing up his rap career, uh, his uh, football career, is weirdo activities. What do I got to do with music and shit right now? No, I'm just curious because I'm a big football fan. So like, I'm just like, I just, I, I'm a huge football fan. And I find it fascinating that like you really like have like a real high level like football run you know what i'm saying before the rap shit like took off so yeah i just think it's fast but obviously a part of your story Dope. so i know it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on right now but that's fair <laughs> um i was gonna ask you like when it comes to i remember when you that full estg is looking at the floor like a little bitch you think he look at kevin and say you know my boy listen my boy i don't want to talk about that i don't Let's change the fucking combo. But instead of acting like a little stuck up hood rat, I ain't gonna look at you because you said something I don't like. Fuck out of here. Listen. A lot of these podcasters ask the rappers ahead of time, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? I used to ask that, right? Until somebody from here, which was one of my dudes, told me, bro, don't ask them that. Don't ask them that. Like catch them off guard when you're interviewing. That will that's what makes a good interview. I used to ask, like, hey, fool, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? Because I wanted to have a little bit of respect for the guest, right? But my homeboy was like, nah, fool, just ask him whatever. You're the interviewer. You do your fucking job. They know They know why they're here, right? But this guy right here, being a rap millionaire, 
feels entitled, right? Which, hey, listen, he ain't got to be up there. I get it. But come on, dog. Like, the question is not like, hey, what gang are you from? Have you ever killed anybody? The question is simple. I saw a video of you playing football. I like football. You was a beast. Can we talk about that? Come on. Signed with Gotti. I remember the the viral moment where he, there was just all this cash. And at that time, I feel like there was like a bidding war going on for ESTG at that moment. Um, one, what made you rock with Gotti? And what is something over the last two or three years that you have learned? Pinchi Yoron. Bro, he said, what does this got to do with, with music? I get it. It doesn't, but it sort of does. It's your upbringing. It's your past. You know, uh, your fans want to know about your upbringing. Your fans want to know about your past, unless you're hiding something. You want to know what he's hiding? I'm a real street N-I-G-G-A. I'm a real street dude. R-N-S. That's what they're hiding. And they really fake. So, the, you know, he, listen, if it gets out there that he's like this, that he went to college, that he he graduated from school, he comes from a good background, he almost played football. If that gets out there, like super, super out there, it, it's out there right now, but it's overshadowed by his gangster rap image. If that gets out there, bro, people are going to be like, oh, that fool's fake. ESTG is fake. That fool used to go to college. That fool got a good mom and a good daddy. He used to live in the suburbs. That fool lying in his raps. Fool's a buster. That's what he don't want. And you know what he just did? He just made people go, bro, you know how many people are going to go look up right now, ESTG playing football? He's fucking stupid. All he had to say was like, yeah, dog, I did play football for a little bit of uh, my time. I wanted to uh, you know, get into the pros, but it didn't work out. Music's where it's at. Done, bro. People were not even paid attention to it. Now, because of all these shenanigans, now people are actually going to go look into it. And now you're going to have thousands of reactors making videos. Bro, I swear, these motherfuckers be slow. Motherfuckers be slow. But his music is hard, bro. I did hear some tracks. I thought it was pretty hard. He got the image, you know. But ain't nothing wrong with playing football. Ain't nothing wrong with owning a couple of businesses. Ain't nothing wrong with getting your Skrilla on the street. However you get your money is how you get your money. Simple. You know, let's go. Let's see. Let's see what else happens. Well, for the very first time in Bootleg Head Podcast history, we had someone walk off of the set. Interesting. Oh, well, well, there's the ESTG interview that he was two hours late for. Damn, and he was late two hours. The disrespect. I've never had nobody be late. I've, yeah, yeah, yes, I have. But I always give them like a window. I tell me I go up like at 7, anywhere between like 7, 7.30, you know, uh, because I do, I motherfuckers cry about this, but I go live and I let her, I let it simmer for like thirty minutes, uh, so people can join before I get in the the before I turn on the podcast. Uh, but listen, ESTG doesn't want his background to be out there because he wants the only image of him to be a gang banger. That's what pays him, and I get it. I understand it's a business move. You know, it's a business move, but at the same time, bro, you cannot have skeletons in your closet and expect them not to peek. Expect them not to try to come out the closet or fall out the closet. Eventually, it will leak, you know. So sometimes you got to get in front of it before, you know, it, 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 it creates a monster on its own. But listen, we're going to kill this video. We're laying, call it a day. I think ESTG fucked up by doing that. Uh, as a matter of fact, See that red, that, oh, wait, you can't see it. Let me pull it back up. Right there. See that Sprite can on the table? eBay, baby. eBay. ESTG, walking out, podcast, soda. 100 racks. Right there, baby. Look at that. Boom. Come on.
Calm the fuck on. Uh, we're going to kill this video. We're laying color day. Once again, go over the Blue Devil Reactions. I'm going to go right now, type up the title, upload the thumbnail. It'll be up by the time you're watching this. By the time you're done watching this video, it will be up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to put it right here in the uh, in the, in the the boxes that come up at the end. Click on it. Go show some love. Go, as a matter of fact, go share it and send it to Opina. You know, but other than that, I'm Blue Devil. This has been a Hater World production, and we out.